welcome back to another week online. I hope you're doing really well. I hope you had a great half term, either one week or two weeks, depending how lucky you were, and you are getting ready to get back to school tomorrow. Well, today we're going to be starting a new series that's following the same as what the adults are doing for the month of November. We're going to be looking at different characteristics of Jesus, so different things that describe him. And this week, we're looking at how Jesus came to serve. Now, Jesus didn't come to be a king and be served. He showed us kind of an opposite way of living. Jesus came to serve. So why don't you find your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 10, verses 35, and let's read this together. James and John came to Jesus and asked him a question. Teacher, let us both sit next to you in your kingdom, with one of us on your right and one on your left. Jesus replied, You don't know what you're asking for. Can you really suffer like I will? We can, they answered. Jesus said, It is not my place to say who will sit next to me. These seats belong to those they are prepared for. The other disciples heard about what James and John had asked and became angry at them. Jesus warned them all, Anyone who wants to be important among you must serve others. Instead of putting yourself first, you should put others first. Even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but he came to serve others. He came to give his life to set many people free. So I've always found this story to be a bit funny and a bit, well, disappointing in James and John. Because these two brothers had been with Jesus for a really long time, and yet they were arguing over who was going to be the most important. Now, you would have thought by now that they had learned from Jesus that it wasn't about being important, it was about following God. But here they are, they come to Jesus and they ask for something almost crazy to sit at Jesus's right and left side in heaven. They want to be important. They want to be seen. They want other people to know that they are chosen by Jesus. Jesus really had to explain to them that they had got it completely wrong. See, Jesus didn't come to show power in the same way that other rulers had. He didn't want to be known as being powerful. He wanted to be known as loving and servant-hearted. And he hoped that James and John and his other disciples had learnt this lesson. Those who are the least will become the greatest. Hmm, it's a bit backwards, isn't it? So this backward teaching, do we think we can learn from this? Do we want to be powerful? Do we want to be important? Do we want everybody to see how great we are? Or are we someone who is more like Jesus, a bit more servant-hearted? So this is a bit like a test to see how truly servant-hearted you are. So you have to be honest when answering these questions or else it doesn't work. And you don't need to tell anyone. It can just be something that you do in your head. And at the end, I will show you a scale of maybe when you need to do a bit more work or maybe you are just perfect at being a servant. Question one. Your mum asked you to help with the dishes. Do you A. Run and hide? B. Do it but complain? C. Go straight away to help? Question two. You woke up early and everyone is still sleeping. Do you A. Jump on everyone's bed. B. Put the TV on so you're not supposed to. C. Play 
all read quietly and let them sleep. Question three. Your brother or sister needs help with their homework. That's you know. Do you A. Ignore them and go play. B. Ask your parent to help them. C. Help them. Question four. One of your friends is crying in the playground. Do you A. Ignore them and keep playing. B. Give them a quick high five and run. Or C. See what's wrong and stay with them. Question five. Your parent wants you to donate your old clothes and toys. Do you A. Scream and yell and refuse. B. Only give the ones you really don't like. C. Help your parents sort them out to be donated. So how did you do? Well, of course, it's only a little quiz and things like this may not come up in your life, but the idea is there. So if you got mostly A's, well, you may need to look at how you can be a bit more kind, a bit more helpful and a bit more servant hearted. Mostly B's? Well, you're getting there. You're somewhere in the middle. You try hard sometimes, but then maybe other times you forget to help. How else could you be a bit more servant hearted? And C's, well, yeah, you guys have got it really well. You are acting so much like Jesus, but let's remember to always keep our eyes on him and look to him to be our example. So how well did you do? Do you need to maybe try a little bit harder to be more servant hearted? Or are you someone that is naturally able to help those around you? Well, I think all of us will have to try harder at being more like Jesus because he was perfect and we, well, we never can be perfect. But God can always help us when we ask him to. So let's pray today that we can be more servant-hearted like Jesus and we can learn from his example, not like James and John. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you love us so much that you sent your son Jesus to be our perfect example. I pray that each day this week and for the coming months, we can learn to be more servant hearted, that we can look out for others before ourselves, that we can look for how we can help, that we can learn how to be less selfish and more like you. Thank you that you love us no matter what. In your name I pray, amen. Now in another part of the Bible, it says that Jesus showed his servant heart by washing his disciples feet. Now that's a pretty gross job that only servants did, people that were kind of paid to do it. But Jesus did it to show his disciples how much he loved them and how much he was willing to do the dirty stuff for them. Well, one of our crafts today is to make your own little foot washing station out of a cup. So why don't you check out the description box below to find the instructions and see if you can make one at home. There's also some other ideas of how you can be a bit more servant hearted this week. Maybe you could make some coupons for your family members to use. So maybe one free washing up the dishes without being asked or breakfast in bed coupon. Whatever it is that you want to do to be extra helpful this week. Don't forget to get involved with our competition from last week, which was to finish the family tree of the Bible. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, do go and check out last week's video. You've got until November 14th, so a few more weeks to get it done and sent to me so I can see it. And lastly, it is November now, so I have no problems mentioning Christmas again. This year we're making a movie instead of doing our annual play. And it's not just for your kids, it's for everyone. For adults, for grandparents, for teenagers, for pets even. Whoever wants to get involved, 
can. Wouldn't it be amazing to see the whole church doing something together, even though we can't actually be together in the same room? I will be sending out more information about ways that you can get involved, ranging from just a few minutes of talking to a camera to helping out with big roles. And also, if you have any special talents that you would like to add in, like playing an instrument or dancing or, I don't know, sock puppets, do let me know so I can add it in to the play. Well, it's been great hanging out with you again today. I hope I will either see you next week on video or next week at the church. Have a great one. Bye.